and you know it, clap your hands. If you happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you happy and you know it, polish your nails. <laughs> if you happy and you know it, and your face will truly show it. If you happy and you know it, say, what up, do it. How y'all doing out there in the world? It's me, your homegirl, LaDosha Wright, the author of Curly Hair Adventures, What They Don't Tell You at the Hair Salon, and The Beauty and Barber Plan. That's right, it's free on my Patreon page at patreon.com, Global Hair Care, all right? So that's where you can find that free book. It's for my professionals out here. Welcome, welcome, welcome to those of you who don't know me. I am the zany, brainy, happy, super fantastic African magic, happy hairstylist, always telling you what they don't tell you at the hair salon. And today, I've got a good topic. I've got a really good, good topic. Now, my guest is relaxing in her color because she's getting her color on, okay? And so um, I'm going live to just bring to you this wonderful, wonderful topic of, you ready? How to protect your salon visit investment. That's a good topic. You know, you come to the hair salon and you always want to know, how do I get the best bang for my buck. I mean, I'm coming to a hair salon every two weeks. I'm coming to a hair salon every week. I'm getting my hair colored every month, every two months. You know, I'm getting my lashes, my makeup, my nails. Whatever you're getting done at the hair salon, you really want to know how do you maximize that salon visit where you're not throwing your money down the drain. So get your pins ready. Don't forget to share this information, right? Don't forget to subscribe to the channels and by all means, hit your heart, your thumbs up button and let me know if you like what I'm doing here, okay? So let's jump right into the topic of how do you maximize your investment on a salon visit? Well, number one, the best way to do that is before you even come to a hair salon. That's right. Hair care at home is the best way to maximize your time in the salon and money spent. So here's why. Because number one, when the hair is well kept at home, it's less money in the hair salon by way of treatments and haircuts and you know all that kind of stuff that's number one uh number two when you take care of your hair at home you get more performance so your hair styles better your hair grows your ends don't split you know when well, your hair gonna grow anyway but you know what i'm saying you know it's gonna be a little bit better because that massaging at home from shampooing you're rushing the blood up and then that's going to make your hair be stronger so as as you come to the hair salon and it gets manipulated you know what you have less breakage so that's the that's that's the number one way now I know what the argument is so the argument is typically well I just spit you know 65 75 35 whatever the value of your visit is you've just spent that money so your rationale could be well if I just gave you you know X amount of dollars week one why am I gonna turn around and give it to you this, this, uh, the same amount next week? Because you're not. What we want you to do at home is to care for it. But the challenge really lies to me in the expectations of beauty. That's right, in America, we have a standard of beauty that even me, I'm a cosmetologist, I can't even live up to that standard. You know where your hair's got to be perfectly curled. You know, we want the hairstyle to be all coiffed. You know, this is just a regular flat on hairstyle. I'm a hairstylist, so I don't have the luxury of a, of a TV crew to come and, you know, do my makeup and snatch my little fat. I got a fat gut, you know, you can't see it. Yeah. Okay, so I don't have the luxury of having all this snatched back and lifted up. and Because I'm, you know, I call this real hair on real people in real life. So we've got to lower our standards on what it is to be attractive, you know, when we're talking about our hair. 
So what I encourage all of my guests to do is I can do their hair one week and they can do their hair the other week. And if they can't do their hair, just wash it and pull it back in the ponytail to lower the expectations on the hairstyle because you know what? Everybody, they just can't do hair. I mean, I'll be honest. I actually was taught. I didn't, anybody that know me growing up would know. I just had them two little French braids. I was not the diva, you know, growing up. So um, some of us have to be taught how to do this stuff. Some of us were gonna get it and some of us were not going to get it. It's like two left thumbs, you know? It's never gonna happen. I'm not gonna be able to cut my own grass. I'm sure I could, but I ain't doing it, okay? So it just comes to that when it, when it, it boils down to that when it comes to being able to style your hair. Some people are really passionate and they can do it. Then you have other people who are like, you know, it's just not the I is, you know, it ain't all that for me. You know, what's important is that you have your hair clean. That way, when you get ready to style it, you will have the hair that you want, the fabric, so that the stylist can create color, a cut, a style. You see where I'm going with this? So it's really, really important that you care for your hair at home more than when you come to a hair salon, like going to the dentist, you know? The dentist will tell you, you gotta floss your teeth, you know? You got to, you know, scrub your tongue. You got to brush your gums. The dentist's going to get on you about how you have to have that oral hygiene because he doesn't want you coming to the dentist every week for cleaning and examination. He's like, uh, Ladosha, you're going to have to brush your teeth at home. That's how your hair salon visit is. It's actually the same equivalent. Do what you can do at home, and then you come to the salon for what you don't know how to do. So it's a pandemic, and we cannot see as many people as we used to see, nor do we want to. You know, we have to mask up. We have to do a lot of things different. So what we offer, we've always offered, is a a la carte menu. So an a la carte menu gives the customer the opportunity to do what they can do at home and only pay us for what they want. So you do have some customers like, I don't care what it costs, I'm coming every week. I don't care what it costs, I'm coming twice a week. Okay, that's a small percentage. But then you have the other core of people who like, I don't care how good you are, how much you go live on social media, how many books you draw, how many pictures you color, slap your name on it, you ain't getting all my money. You see what I'm saying? So you have a lot of different dichotomies and mindsets when it comes to visiting a hair salon. So what's important is that you do what you can. In the event of those customers who are taking advantage of the a la carte, they're only gonna pay me and the Reverence Design team for what they can't do. So some people can wash and blow dry, but for the love of hair, they just cannot. Said they will wash their hair at home, right? Blow it dry and then come to us and we'll smooth it out or vice versa. Maybe their daughter can flat iron it or their husband can, you know, whatever. And then they'll just pay us to shampoo it, smooth it out, and then they'll go home and finish it up. Or they'll just say, shampoo me and I can take the rest from there. It doesn't really matter. What matters is that we have a nice meeting place where we can have a meeting of the minds and we can kind of do that little cognitive restructuring that my book talks about. Because a lot of us, we've got to change the way we look at our hair. So in real life, I would love to not show this white hair. I mean, I would like to get my hair color like every two weeks, you know. I would like to have more highlights. Better yet, I would like to be all this blonde all over. But you know what? It's not practical. It's not practical, number one, because my hair is so white and so wiry, y'all don't even want me to. Okay, I'm gonna come on up close so y'all can see. Y'all see this? Girl, this ain't the hair you want to be trying to cover every two weeks because it's just you. Oh, uh uh. So I had to lower my expectations, lower my standard. So actually, it would be my colorist, Kendra. And she said, Ladosha, you're just going to have to wear the white hair because, first of all, I'm too busy to be coloring your hair every two weeks and you don't pay me enough money. <laughs> That's number one. Number two, you keep cutting it out. So just embrace the white hair. I did not want to do it. I was like, no, I don't want to 
be the old lady in the hair salon. I want to be younger like you guys because everybody that works in the salon is much, much younger than me. So you can imagine how intimidating that was for me who's maturing. I'm not plump anymore. Like I said, I got this little gut here. My boobs are sagging. Can I at least get some color? Come on, y'all. And she was like, no, accept it. And I was like, <laughs> Okay, so I had to lower my expectations and embrace, you know what, this is not my real hair color. So, okay, in real life, this looks like really tacky. I know, it looked good to me. Shut up, I don't like it. But that's okay, because I, like you, I'm just an everyday person, and it's unrealistic to try to keep coloring this every time I see a white hair come out because my hair grows every day, all day. You know what I'm saying? Every day, all day. So as soon as I color this white hair, that means tomorrow when I wake up, oh, I color my eyebrows too, by the way. They're just as white. So, so when I color this, that means when I wake up tomorrow, I'm going to see some white hair. So when I color my eyebrows, I color them every two weeks because they're gonna be all grown back out. You see what I'm saying? So I had to lower my expectations. Which would you wanna cover? Your eyebrows or your hairline? I picked the eyebrows because I don't wanna to fade to white. You see what I'm saying? So everybody's got some type of a struggle when it comes to beauty. But what's important is that we lower the expectations and let's lean towards the side of having clean hair even if it's not the best hairstyle. People are like, your hair look good, your hair always look good, but it's always straight. When you gonna change your hair so I'm not, because I don't have the time, and I don't know how to do it. I'm just gonna give it 100. I'm only gonna do what I know how to do. I don't know how to do all that stuff, and I'm very forthright. I'm very honest with my customers. I don't know how to do it. Now, I've had people like, you know what, I'm out of here. I've lost customers and I've gained customers. So that's a segue into, you know, during this season when we just can't go out and do the things that we wanna do, so we know we gotta prep our hair at home. But is there ever a point where you gotta fire that hairstylist? Yeah, it's a point, you know, there comes a point. And sometimes it comes in a skill set. And I have been fired. Yes, I'm not ashamed to admit it. I've been fired on several occasions for not being able to deliver on the hairstyle. But I'm really, really good at giving the right information. So when I'm fired, I do feel bad, okay? But at least I know in my heart of all hearts that I've given it my all and that's the best that I can do. So you have to do the same thing at home. Take care of your hair at home to maximize your income at the hair salon and to minimize the time spent. The more uh, problematic hair, we've got to spend more time, we've got to charge you more money. And we don't, you know, we, we want to make money and we want to charge you, but we want to charge you accordingly. So these are the things that you can do at home. And when we don't do it, we refuse to do it, or in my instance, I couldn't, I could not deliver. You know what? You gotta switch out to a new hairstylist who's going to give you what you're looking for regardless of how much you know you like them. I know like terminating a stylist is like getting rid of your husband. How do I break up with Ladosha? They just be like, I'm not coming back no more, don't call me. And I'm like, okay, I understand. And I do understand, okay? But sometimes, you know, we go above and beyond and we got these expectations where we want to make this happen. And you cannot make something happen on hair that's not there. And the best way to be able to increase the likelihood is to keep the hair clean. Change your thinking from I spent X amount of dollars and I want to, that hairstyle to last. No. Think about your teeth. A uh, cleaning and examination cost about almost the same as a hairstyle. About 75, give or take, depending on where you go. I go to Dr. Walk, okay? So, depending on where you go and how bad your teeth is, you see what I'm saying? So, but you still go home and you brush your teeth, right? You don't say, I just spent $75 for him to bite down the plate 
and step in the wrong step and then come back and, and scrub my teeth. I'm not going to brush my teeth for two weeks. You see? You wouldn't say that, right? You'd say, I ate that grotesque, yummy, smelly, you know, onion burger and I'm going to brush my teeth immediately when I get home. That's the same mindset that we want you to have when it comes to taking care of your hair. When you think about the pandemic, one of the things they're always asking us to do is to do what? Wash, wash your hands. Why? Because when you wash your hands, you break the soap molecules, do what? They break those protein spikes on that virus and you rinse them, you rinse them away, right? Well, almost the same things happen when you use soap on your scalp. You're going to break up those dirt molecules, the fiber on the scalp. The, the ingredients in the shampoo will disintegrate and dissolve it. And then the hair will come to life and now you can have a beautiful hairstyle. So you get the same benefits, you know, when it comes to being clean because magical things happen when the hair is clean. I know culturally a lot of people are like, but we black, we can't, we can't do it like that. Come on now, y'all. That's like saying it's a pandemic. We ain't need to be wearing no mask. I'm just saying. It doesn't mean that you're going to have 100% goof proof from it. You're going to decrease the likelihood. So no, washing your hair more often doesn't mean you're going to have hair like, I don't know, whoever you like, Oprah, your auntie or whoever, but it's going to increase the likelihood of you having the head of hair that you want because hair is skin. And so skin has to be what? Re revitalized. How do you revitalize your skin? You wash it. You exercise. You don't just get in the shower and rinse off. Remember when you were a kid? I know. What's up, Keith? I know you remember when you were a kid and your mom would say, hey, get in the tub and take a bath. And you went in there and you just kind of did like this. And you came out and you were scratching. And your mom would say, get back in that tub. And you'd be like, how she know I'm still dirty? Because you're scratching. It's the same thing with your scalp. When you feel that itching, it doesn't mean you're black and you're supposed to itch or you're, you know, uh, from Czechoslovakia and you got an itch on the right. No, it means it's the yeast. It's moving. Those micro, I know they're like, ew, don't you, but it's for real. That's what they don't tell you at the hair salon. And that's what's really happening. So you can save money. You can save time and you can have the hairstyle, the hair color, you know, the great energy, the, you know, all that you're looking for when you do this at home. And you say, well, if I just shampoo my hair Wednesday and I have a hair appointment on Friday, should I still come? You can. I mean, I brush my teeth before I go to the dentist. I wash up really good before I go see my gynecologist. I don't, oh, he going to sterilize anyway. You know what I'm saying? He just go, ah, she just going to take care of the bit. No, they want us to come in there as clean as possible. Because when you're clean, we can, you know, you can get down to the nitty gritty. So the same thing, a cosmetologist would love if you cleaned your hair before you come. Now, there are some services that you don't want to irritate the scalp the day before. But surely that three-day window of opportunity, it will suffice and you will see such a big difference in the length. Number one, clean hair always means longer hair. Now, do you have to use soap? I know what y'all saying, girl, you tripping. You up there with that hair all flat on out, you done squeeze the life out with your new H2 Pro flat on, because I got some new H2 Pro flat on, you know what I'm saying? And so you, but that ain't gonna work. You know what, you guys are right. So soap, it is the most popular way to clean hair, but it isn't the only way. You know, you could go buy some seed. Most people have an astringent in their house. They either have mouthwash or they'll have like sea breeze. Either or, you can use either or. And you can take your face cloth or cotton ball and you're just going to dip it. Don't make it soaking wet, all right? Squeeze it out into a couple of the cotton balls, all right? And you're going to go through your scalp and you can do what we call a dry shampoo. Now that's for those of us who have a scaly scalp 
or very oily scalp, you can buy the dry shampoo in a can that will suck up some of the oil and trap the dirt molecules. When you brush it, you can take it out. Either or, you're going to come out good. Please don't use flour and don't grind up your rice to try to do it. Just buy the stuff, people. Or you can take some Listerine or some sea breeze, any mouthwash. They are all what? Antifungal. Now, that monostat, don't you do that because that's a whole nother kind of yeast. You know what I'm saying? So don't grab the monostat. That's another yeast down. You know I'm real, okay? Oh, y'all feeling me? Hit the heart button if y'all know what I'm talking about, okay? Don't use the monostat. No. Use the actual sea breeze or you can use a mouthwash and just go through your scalp and just wipe away the debris and then brush your hair and that will buy you another day or two and then you're going to wash it out. So if you have braids in your hair, if you have weave in your hair, if you're in the military, you know, you can't get to the soap, you know, you're out in the woods, you're out back and then you're roughing it, whatever, you like, your water got turned off, I know what that feel like. I had my water turned off because I wanted to go to the mall. Remember when Randall Park Mall was open? <laughs> so I went to Randall Park Mall, got my lights turned off, my water turned off, you know what I'm saying? But I, I done grew up. I done grew up now, okay? So it's just that simple. So in real life, like right now, it's the pandemic. So some people are so sick that they just cannot get in the tub. They cannot get in the shower. They cannot even get wet because they just don't feel good. What about those people, Miss Smarty Pants, on social media acting up? You can cleanse your granny's hair, your auntie's hair, your mama hair, your own hair, your girlfriend's hair, your boo thing hair. You can do the same thing. Just take a little bit. Don't make it soaking wet, all right? And you're gonna just move the cloth around. Don't double dip, you know, don't do that. Once you dip it and you wipe it, switch to another section because you don't want to spread the, the fungus. That's the yeast, and yes, you can spread it. So make sure you're moving the cloth around or you're switching to a different cotton ball. We also have DECA. We have the scalp therapy. They, that can be used as a pre-cleanser. But I'm just giving you guys some real life stuff that you can use in your cabinet in the event you really are in between blessings, number one. Or number two, you're just cheap like me. I ain't gonna lie, damn it. My ass can be cheap, okay? So when I don't feel like washing my hair, I just open up my list. I do it too. I'm gonna keep it 100. And if I'm feeling real fancy, I'll make something with some essential oils. But you know, I'm a little cheap sometimes. I know I'm a Scorpio. Scorpio, we can be really, really frugal. And then sometimes we just spend way too much money, so much that I got my water shut off shopping at Winkleman's at Randall Park Mall. I ain't going to even tell them I was just that getrin, okay? But I've grown up, you see? So here I am, a licensed professional cosmetologist specializing in trichology with a book titled, what they don't tell you at the hair salon because I've lived this. So I know this to be true. The very best way to protect your investment in your salon visit is to care for your hair at home. Do what you can do. Lower your standards of beauty. It is not realistic to always straighten out your hair, roller set, flat twist, you know, whatever. Just wash it pull it back in a ponytail and rock a cold, funky, cold Medina personality. And you can put on some of your African-centric starter kit jewelry if you want to. Give me a little Kyrie shield, jump up, you know what I'm saying? So you can do whatever you need to do to pump up your personality when your hair is not your best feature. So sometimes it just works out that way. You know, your hair is just, it's a bad hair day or whatever you want to call it. Lower your standards and keep the hair clean. Do a leave-in conditioner. You don't always have to use an instant conditioner. When I take my guests back to the shampoo,
that poop ball, I'm going to just use a leave-in conditioner to show her how easy this can be. At the hair salon, we're doing all the bells and whistles because you guys are so kind to, uh, you know, patronize us. So we are going to go above and beyond what you would be doing at home to make your hair look nice. But at home, you could easily just shampoo your hair, repeat and lather, do a leave-in conditioner, a nice smooth ponytail. You can blow it dry. You can do it while it's wet and tie it down. Whatever you want to do, or you can, it takes me three days to do my, I mean two days. It takes me two days to do my own hair because nobody in the salon would do it. No, I'm just kidding. No, no, I'm not. They won't do it because it takes too long. It takes me two days and I'm a licensed cosmetologist. So I shampoo, condition, I smooth it out, and then I wake up the next day and then I re-smooth it because it just can't happen in one day because... I don't know how to do it. I'm just, I'm just keep it 100, okay? So if you ever, anybody single, if you date me, okay? I'm not going to look like this when I'm going to keep it 100, okay? I'm going to look a little bit different, all right? Okay, so there you have it. What they don't tell you at the hair salon about maximizing your salon visit experience. Also, Black Friday is coming up, so you know what that means. Visit my Amazon store at Amazon.com, Ladosha Wright, and I have some wonderful two for 30 deals jumping off. My book is going to be on sale for just that one right there. What they don't take the hair salon is going to be available for just $15, and then Curly Hair Adventures will be on sale for $10, and then when you come to the hair salon, we're going to have DECA, two for $20. we are going to have pomades. that's right. We've got this right here, the Nature's Blessings. Instead of $11 for, or $12 for one, you're going to get two. So you're going to get buy one, get one free. Um, so we're going to have some wonderful Black Friday specials so you guys can do what you need to do at home. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel where I'm just giving the huggy lowdown. I do download these. That way, if you're not on social media, you can just go to the YouTube and check it out if you have family and friends who's not on all the social media platforms. I make it my business to share the uh, information on the YouTube channel, but you guys can subscribe. There's a lot of information. So I'm really doing my best to help you guys Keep it really simple when it comes to taking care of your hair. And that's about all I have to say. And I'm going to keep on acting up. You know what I'm saying, Pam? Pam, you know it bad out here. That's right. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you guys so very much. You know what I say when I'm always signing out, right? If you happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you happy and you know it, do the walk. If you happy and you know it, do the aroma and your face with truly show it. If you happy and you know it, flick your hair. <laughs> all right, guys. All right. You know what I'm saying? I'm always signing out for real. A whole lot of peace, a whole lot of love, and a whole lot of hair. And if you ain't got no hair, don't want hair, can't stand hair, hell, that shit won't even grow. Don't even worry about it. All you have to do is just rub your beautiful, beautiful, beautiful ball head. Peace out.